Is there anything else that you would like to um, add that you would like to tell our audiences that something, perhaps some question I didn't ask or something you've always wanted to say or potentially ask me or what have you? Yes, um, you know, it's very timely. Right now we just had our first um, female vice president in office and with mm -hmm. the whole Me Too move movement, I think it's great to see a woman in an empowering role. I got to really embrace my um, empowerment mm -hmm. and confidence in this, which was great for me personally. Um, you wrote the president of the United States as Helen Colton. Mm -hmm. You then cast her as a female, and then you recast her as a female. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think it's great that it was it was a given. You never referenced her gender. You never made it about being a female president. You made it about just being the president. Just being the president, and, who um, happened to be female. Right, and yeah. I think you know Oscar Wilde said that life imitates art more than art imitates life. Art influences the way we think of the world around us, right? Yes. It, it changes us and our perceptions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully one day life will imitate art in this case. Why did you, why were you so certain you wanted a female to play this role? Well, just thinking in the real world, we're ready for it to begin with. And, but secondly, I've always had, um, I've been influenced a lot by the early movies from the 30s and the 40s when we saw like the Betty Davises and the Joan Crawfords. Mm. And you know, you're looking at strong female characters in female driven movies. And then as I referenced earlier today, um, my mother is a very strong um, character in my life. And, and, and it was never about her being a woman, it was her just being a strong person and not relying on her gender for anything, just being a strong person and pushing forward. So, yes, I was determined that even though we had gone through a casting challenge with the President of the United States, that I was going to find a woman to play this part because I just didn't want to cave into, okay, we'll just get a guy. And that, you know, I could just get someone and call it a day. But I think it's important that we show the way life really is in the real world. And this is why we have the National Security Advisor played by Stephanie E. And of course, the inspiration there was um, Condoleezza Rice, mm -hmm. who was George Bush's uh, National Security Advisor. And for, for Major Ellen Sampson, what I always admired about Patience was that, you know, she served in the military and she had a leadership position. And so, you know, the Air Force was the particular unit of the military there. So um, I wouldn't say she was playing herself by any stretch, but um, I saw her in, in that role there. And I wanted to keep it evenly balanced. So because you know, between the, you know, the men and women, women and men, because I, I think we're going for an overall audience. We're not just narrowing our, 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 our focus here. And, um, and I'll just say you slipped into the role of the president of the United States at the right time. I mean, it was the, it's just the way you brought this character to life was everything I could have hoped for. Because I wrote this character in 2006. <laughs> and in First World, it was a much smaller character because these, this is a prequel to that story and we already had another president in. Um, but uh, the kudos goes to you and to, and to Stephanie and to Patience for breathing life into these roles. But yeah, I didn't want to write characters just to be a woman because just the president just happens to be a woman. The national security advisor just happens to be a woman because I think in today's day and age, we are, the, the, the conversations can, get, can go into many different tracks where you have to put, put this person in or that person in. I look at it as, let's put the most talented person in, you know, and it shouldn't make any difference right. what the gender is because um, it, it was, I hope anyone that sees this film and sees you play the president of the United States say, take a little pause, hey, maybe the White House will get a copy. Right. You know, because, <laughs> you know, you look at it for what it is. I mean, I remember um, the movie, um, Air Force One mm -hmm. when Glenn Close mm -hmm. played the vice president. And you, you saw just how that just worked out so well. Right. You know, but. Uh, That's no. a given. You made it just completely yeah. a given and acceptable. Exactly. I just was like, no, Helen Colton. If I can be Harry Colton, it's going to be Helen Colton. Especially with the limited time you had to recast, you could have said, let's open it up to, you know. Yeah, and you know, and we talked about that. We were like, well, we got to get this film moving. So, you know, we talked about, I'm going, no, no, I, I am just going to, and you know, it's interesting when we, when you came into audition, we had three other actresses that were, that were quite fine. And um, had you not accepted the part, we, we would have gone to, you know, plan B. But um, I found there were, there, there's just so many wonderful actresses out there. I just, um, but again, it, it comes down to how I, the, the movies I brought up, and of course, and my mother, who's like, you know, 
just, um, but who raved about you all the way home. Hour and 15 minutes home, one hour, it's all about <laughs> Wendy Hartman playing the president. So that's so sweet. So thank Aww. you. Is there anything else you would like to? You know, the, the only other question I was going to ask you, I think you have the most professional set I've ever been on. So organized oh, um, and so stress free. And that helped me so much because I was already so stressed about taking on this role, the enormity of the scope of this project for me at the last minute. But it so helped having a very calm set environment so you could put all your focus into your character and what you sure. were doing. How, how do you get, how do you strive for that? Well, I haven't been a performer myself and having done, you know, and the kind of work I used to do was like, you know, live stuff, live to tape, whatever. And I would be under too many sets where it was confusion, it was chaos. And in a case of an actor or an actress that has to memorize lines, you're like, well, okay, I got the lines memorized. It's a chaotic set, but the lines are memorized, I'll be all right. But when you're doing a live to tape and you're just talking off the cuff, and there's all this confusion going around you, it can just, it can just wreak havoc on any performance, whether it's one for memorization, one for whatever. And I look at it like this, an actor or a crew member has put in a lot of time to prepare for what they have to do today. So if I can't, as a director, be organized, your shot list, this is, what we, this is what we're looking to do today, these are the scenes we're shooting, this is when to report, this is when we're leaving, this is when we're having lunch. I want people, when they arrive on set, to feel like the only thing they have to worry about is they know how to push the record button. Yeah. They need to know how to do their lines. And that's it. Because if those things are, are, can be accomplished on the, with the cast and the crew, my job as the conductor of the orchestra is just to make sure everything plays well. So you did a great job. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no. And you, <laughs> hey, listen, if it wasn't for, for actors like you and crew like Dan, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, we're only as good as the team we work with. So thank you. Thank you to all of you. <laughs> you know, thank you to all of you. My pleasure. Yeah. And thank you, Wendy, for, for um, saving the film. I mean, um, it was a moment of inflection for us because we had to start on that day. And you got through those four lines. I think that that's what kept me going when I, I was going to call you panicked and say, no, after 24 hours with, this, with the script, just I can't, there's no way. Yeah. But I knew what was your alternative. You know, I knew the pressure that you had to start filming yeah. at your location that you had already booked and your crew, had, you were already booked. Yeah. And I just, so I, ha I had to do it. You gave me no choice, Mark. <laughs> now, let me just ask you about, maybe this is something that is like a little too off our field for personal. We talked about continuity on things and all that. And I looked, when I saw the film on Friday, I, I mean, I still really can't see any continuity issues. I mean, there's a little minor, weird little things <laughs> came up and all that. I love your hair. And this is me speaking as me personally. How did you, I mean, I mean, in all honesty, we filmed all those weekends. And you don't just have a cut bob thing straight down. I mean, your hair's got a nice little pattern to weave to it. How did you do that? I mean, really, every weekend. We're not again. This isn't hair like mine. I mean, you have You're a lucky yeah time. I mean, yeah. You would send. I think you would send me some pictures of the hair that you thought would be appropriate for the president, and yeah. um, it had a little wave to it. So I couldn't just go straight. I had to do the little wave, and I just time took my time every weekend. I, I had that hotel room. I was able to really get ready there and just bring all the, you know, tools I needed. Oh, it just happens. I just wake up that way. <laughs> she shakes her head and boom, there yeah, it is, it president. Happens. I wake up like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, it worked out great. And, and thank you again, uh, Wendy Hartman, who plays President Helen Colton.